Jesus. Good afternoon, I'm Sergeant Martinez and the purpose of today's press conference is to update and answer questions regarding the death of Ernie Serrano while he was in our custody. The speakers today will be Sheriff Chad Bianco. He would be giving us a brief uh, as far as the facts known, followed by a video that was posted on social media, store surveillance video, and body-worn camera footage that we'll show you. Once the video is seen, Sheriff Bianco would be available for questions. Sheriff Bianco. Good afternoon. I would like to begin by offering my sincere condolences to the Serrano family. I know this is a difficult time for them and nothing I say today can make it better for them. However, as the Sheriff of Riverside County, I want to make it clear to the public that this office is committed to transparency and a full investigation into the death of Ernie Serrano. I want to make it very clear Mr. Serrano's death is a sad and tragic event for all of us. Before I begin, I would like to thank the media for their patience with my office over the past few days as we gathered the facts surrounding this incident and commend them for their unbiased coverage and of this incident with factual and for the most part, impartial headlines that did not contribute to misinformation and un unnecessary public negative public opinion. As you are all aware, there's a cell phone video which shows a Riverside County deputy striking Mr. Serrano with a baton. Unfortunately, the, negative, the narrative being spread, particularly on social media, is factually inaccurate and does not provide a complete picture of the incident. Today, I'm going to provide a brief overall narrative of our entire contact with Mr. Serrano. Please keep in mind, this is an ongoing investigation and over time, more information will become available. Here are the facts as we know them today. Our contact with Mr. Serrano began on Monday, December 14th, around 6 p.m. Deputies were called to a family disturbance in the city of Harupa Valley. A family member of Mr. Serrano reported he had recently been released from jail and was currently under the influence of methamphetamine. Mr. Serrano was reportedly paranoid, not acting rational, quote, out of control, and was refusing to leave the location. Once deputies arrived at the location, they found Mr. Serrano was belligerent, aggressive, and showed obvious signs of being under the influence of drugs. Mr. Serrano became combative with deputies and was eventually arrested. During the arrest, it was necessary for deputies to use a taser in order to force Mr. Serrano to comply. During the arrest, two deputies were injured. Mr. Serrano was treated at a local hospital and booked into the Robert Presley Detention Center for being under the influence and felony resisting arrest causing injury to a peace officer. Because of the state imposed zero bail, he was immediately released from custody. Mr. Serrano left the Robert Pre Presley Detention Center around 9 a.m. on December 15th. Later that afternoon, December 15th at 6.11 p.m., we received a call for service at a local grocery store in reference to a man wandering around the parking lot, entering and exiting the store numerous times and cutting in front of customers in the checkout lines. The caller stated the man appeared to be under the influence of drugs and appeared confused. Approximately two hours later, at 8.29 p.m., deputies received another call for service at the same location regarding a male refusing to leave the location. The caller stated a man who appeared to be under the influence of drugs was refusing to leave the store. During the interaction with uniformed security guards, Mr. Serrano's behavior was described as irrational and combative. As one of the security guards placed a hold on Mr. Serrano, he pulled away and there was a struggle between the two. While deputies were responding, the call was upgraded to a battery and an assault with a deadly weapon after Mr. Serrano became involved in a physical altercation with security. It was relayed that pepper spray and a taser had been used by security on Mr. Serrano. While deputies were en route, a deputy recognized the description of the subject in the call as matching the description from Serrano from the prior night. 
That information was broadcast to responding deputies for officer safety. During the course of the investigation, the security guard told us that during the struggle, Mr. Serrano attempted to remove the security guard's holstered firearm. The security guard then used a taser to gain compliance, but it was not effective. As the struggle continued, the same security guard sprayed Mr. Serrano with pepper spray, but it did not seem to affect him. The struggle between the security guard and Mr. Serrano lasted several minutes prior to the first deputy arriving. Once on scene, deputies found the security guard still struggling with Mr. Serrano. Deputies intervened and attempted to detain him. However, he did not comply with verbal commands. One of the deputies deployed a taser, which briefly incapacitated Mr. Serrano, causing him to fall to the ground. After only a few seconds, Mr. Serrano jumped to his feet and ignored the deputies. As a note, this is where the cell phone video begins. A second deputy then used his baton to strike Mr. Serrano in his arm and leg in order to gain compliance. This was also ineffective. Another deputy then tackled Mr. Serrano, forcing him to the ground. A taser was again used, which allowed deputies to gain control of Mr. Serrano. He was handcuffed with two sets of cuffs, allowing less strain on his shoulders and arms. After Mr. Serrano was handcuffed, deputies called for paramedics to treat him for his injuries. While waiting, Mr. Serrano stopped breathing. Medical personnel took over and began CPR. Mr. Serrano was taken to a hospital for medical treatment. Sadly, despite life-saving measures, Mr. Serrano's condition deteriorated and he passed away at the hospital. A preliminary hos hospital toxicology report shows that Mr. Serrano tested positive for amphetamine, benzodiazepines, and marijuana. Complete toxicology reports will not be available so for several weeks. This morning, an autopsy was performed on Mr. Serrano. During the autopsy, several contusions were found on his right arm and lower extremity consistent with baton strikes. There were no broken bones or severe injuries noted. Mr. Serrano had a contusion under his chin and what appeared to be a black eye. At least two locations were found indicating a taser strike. There were no other indications of trauma and no signs of asphyxiation. One major finding was that Mr. Serrano's lungs were about twice the size as normal, indicating a drug overdose. Preliminary findings, and I repeat preliminary, indicate the cause of death was acute methamphetamine intoxication causing a fatal arrhythmia while struggling with deputies. Now we would like to play you the following store surveillance video, body-worn camera footage, and the cell phone video from social media. As a warning, the following may be disturbing and it is not suitable for children. Just for information for the media, this particular video is going to be about 10 minutes long if you're live or if you're, if you're showing this.
I have to make a little correction. This video is actually about 20 minutes long. The video that we will show next of Body Worn Camera is about 10. Sorry.
video from the store, obviously store surveillance. Uh, this next video is quite a bit shorter and it is the body worn camera from uh, our deputy. It's the same guy. Hey, Taser, Taser, Taser. 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 Have we got to pull him out? Taser deployed. Who's wrong? Who's Still wrong? physical. I'm wrong. I'm, I have camera. Hold on. Hold on. Got too many hands. Got too many hands. Got him. His hands in. He's on the Who's gonna come? He's spinning. I got Double. Double. Again, man. Stop. Stop. Let me go. Stop. Please. Just relax. Let me go. You're not really. Uh, please. <laughs> Are you good over there, bro? Please. I get it. Uh, 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 15 units for code 4. Let me go! Please! Why are you going to Serrano? Ernie, we know who you are. Uh. Hello? Uh. Hey, does anyone have a spit mask? Go get a spit mask, bro. Where's yours? Go get it. Let me go! Please! You're going to test it for Let me go! You good? You good, bro? Okay. Hey, no worries. Let me go! Let me go! I got it. Ernie, you need to relax. Let me go! Stop Ernie. resisting, bud. We got medical. Come check you Let out. Let me go! Ernie. Ernie. Let me go! Hey, Ernie. Ernie, try to keep going. Ernie, keep going. Ernie, keep going, man. 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 Keep Help me! Help, Help me! My name's Ernie Serrano! My birthday is Right here, where's the big part? This right here. My, so got... My name is Ernie Serrano. You got it? Hey, let me go, please. Okay, Dave, December 15, 2020, please. Let me go. Can you get in the please? Let me go. See if they can lock those doors open. Please. No, pick that up. Yeah, pick it up. Let me go. Yeah, don't let it go. Get the taser off of me. 
We have no teaser on you. Relax, man. Relax. 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 You guys don't injure, right? Relax, man. Relax. Relax. You want a glove for on that one? Yeah. 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 I'll be primary, it's fine. Two forty-five. Yeah, criminal. They start. They're not going to keep him in the jail. Two forty-five. We could do a. a we do unless we do a, a belt enhancement. And then yesterday we got reference to sixty-nine. Today he reached for his gun. I, it looks like his eyebrow. Ernie. Ernie. Is he high on meth again? Is Ernie. he breathing? Is that your lyrium? Get, see it. Get, hey, he's not breathing. He's not breathing. Just come down. He's on the ground. Drag him out this way all the way, guys. Hey, cut off that mask. Cut off the mask. Okay. No. Okay. okay, let's get the cuffs off from the camera. Ernie. Get him out of the Slow down, slow down. All right, joint monitor. Two pallet traffic now. One herp, one herp of 15, subjects unresponsive. Starting CPR. Yesterday, so you got, yeah. We don't know what the injuries are from. But yesterday, his pulse was at 190 when we contacted him. Hey, push them all back. You guys need help with anything? Okay. I did. Well, I don't know. As soon as I got here, I grabbed them. As soon as I got here, I grabbed them. We're already going to the bottom skirts. Where the strong baton's right behind you. Arms? Okay. All right. Okay. 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 At the hospital for three hours, about 177.84. I did, huh? All the time. Still rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's not an indication. Yeah, he did. We need um. He got four, someone interview him.
His last address said, I know, um, three medical issues or anything like that. I followed him yesterday and we went over there. He refused all medical. After this incident, multiple investigations were launched. An investigator from the Riverside County District Attorney's Office will lead this investigation, aided by the Riverside County Sheriff's Force Investigations Detail and the Central Homicide Unit. This combined investigation will examine the original call, Mr. Serrano's actions, and the deputy-involved use of force. This is an active and ongoing investigation. This incident will ultimately be reviewed by the Riverside County District Attorney's Office. Additionally, our department will internally review and evaluate the actions of our deputies with our policy and training standards. The investigation is ongoing. We know there are many questions left to be answered. Again, I know this is a very difficult time for the Serrano family and our prayers are with them. I will now open it to any questions. Um, uh, was anyone with Serrano in the, in the footage at the store? What what do you mean? I saw there was a few people like hanging around like for a while. I don't know if they knew him or if they were with him. Or oh, no. Alone. As far as we know, he was by himself. Our question, I guess. Was, uh, was the store surveillance footage, was that all continuous? Was there any it was all continuous. There is store surveillance, and I'm not a, a tech guy with cameras, but I believe it's a one per second or something like that. One frame per second. All the deputies wearing body cameras or just the one that we saw? Uh, all of the deputies were wearing body cameras. We're still in the process of, of gaining additional information. Like I said, this is ongoing. Um, this is the information that we have right now that we could show you that showed the entire scene. Uh, so what was the, uh, I noticed uh, they put something over his head and his face. Well, was that, what, what exactly was that going on there? We refer to it as a spit shield. It's a, it's a net mask with like a hospital mask in the front. And it's basically because he was, he was coughing, he was spitting. Uh, he had a cut over his eye that was causing blood on the counter. And as he was spitting that and yelling, the, the blood was going around. So it, it covers his mouth so he can't spit the blood. Is that a new thing or is that what? No, that's, we use that. That's been around for a long time. So in the video, he's heard saying, like, let me go. Uh, do you guys know if he said anything else maybe prior to you guys getting there? Well, I'm sure he said a lot of things, but I mean, he was he was very belligerent with the store. He did not want to leave. Uh, I, I don't know what I mean. It was it was the camera that we have has sound. So that's all that he said. From the body camera footage, it seemed like some of the deputies were familiar with him from the incident the day prior. Uh, do you know how many of them that were present on the 15th were present on the 14th? From what I know right now, I believe it was two. You had prior run-ins with him prior to the day before this? Was he someone that was known to the deputies over the course of time or just this, this, this incident? Uh, my understanding is he has an extensive history in Orange County and Los Angeles County. This, the first incident, so these two inc incidents combined, were the only that I'm aware of in our county with our deputies. Do you know what kind of record he had, or he, could he have been a, an AB 109er or something like that that, you know, obviously became a problem? I don't know that. I can't answer that as a, as a fact. I don't know the extent of his criminal history. I'm sure you can find that. I do know that he has extensive history with arrests and convictions for assaults, drugs, um, assaults on peace officers, uh, resisting arrest, felony resisting arrest with injuries to law enforcement officers, at least three prior convictions. I don't know how many arrests. Yes, sir. What type of injuries uh, did the deputies on the 14th of December sustain? Uh, minor cuts and abrasion, soreness, nothing, nothing substantial. Did, uh, 
uh, I couldn't exactly tell from all the footage. Uh, was uh, Serrano was he striking any of the deputies in these in this inc incident, or was he just resisting? I, I think the nature of struggling. There may have been, you know, kicks and struggles, but I I don't know. I can't say that anything in particular. So uh, some people on social media were saying that they saw him, um, you know, that he was just trying to buy cookies and stuff like that. Do you? Have anything to say about that? Do you know exactly how this all started? We know that he made several purchases. He attempted to make several more purchases um, without access to money, even using a driver's license to try and pay for it. Uh, his behavior was over a two to three hour period uh, in and out of the store with multiple purchases. So. Um, while saying that he bought cookies might be factually correct, that context is completely inaccurate. That's, that's inaccurate. And is all this, uh, this footage that you showed today, is that available to all the public now? Yes, I mean, you have all of that now. I believe that um, we will be putting it on our website. And so the answer is yes. Okay, is it on the website now or is there an expected time? It is not, it's like to be on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay. And yes, it will be uploaded to our website. Okay. Once we're done here, you guys have the first. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I guess so. Uh, many of his uh, family members and his uh, their legal representation said that the, uh, the incident was uh, unwarranted and unnecessary to force, like, baton strikes used. As was everything appeared, I know it's an ongoing investigation, does it appear to be within Department of Policy so far or? The purpose of this investigation is to determine whether or not the, um, the actions taken by our deputies were within our policy and uh, were in the lines of um, okay with this arrest and that's what we'll, we'll eventually determine. So as of right now, I can't tell you yes or no, you've seen what I've seen. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, thank you all for coming.